Maureen is, uh, we, have a, we have an outstanding relationship and she has grown into our second mother. To be uh, in assisted living, you're not ready for that, are you, Mayor? No. <laughs> because we're active. Adult children often take on the job as caregiver, but with a busy lifestyle and work, this task can take a toll on them quickly. I think one of the people that we forget a lot of times is the caregiver, especially the daughter, who is a young woman, and I'm sure she wonders what it will be like in the future for her as a primary caregiver. Sometimes I feel very guilty. Sometimes I've asked, do you want me to move in? We'll figure it out um, because I, I feel sometimes that I'm not doing enough, which I don't have any question about what I need to do. But it's a lot, you know, I'm doing everything possible as her, the daughter to make sure that everyone is happy, healthy, and progressing. We've invited Todd Houghton from Comfort Keepers to find out how a caregiver can lighten the load for Maureen and John. So I came in to actually meet with John to discuss the situation that's going on with his wife, Marianne, and talk about how we at Comfort Keepers can come in and enhance the quality of life that they have around their home. So Comfort Keepers, you know, we really provide peace of mind to you and to your family as well. I understand uh, your daughter Maureen's also part of the caregiving. When she comes in, she looks over things, she helps, helps us, she organizes the house. Uh, she has a way of, uh, uh, it's a, really a gift, where she'll go into my closet or her mother's closet and organize everything, mm -hmm. color coordinate them. She has a life too. Right. But she always finds time to come in. Right. People are often um, in a position in life where they don't want to admit that they need help or that assistance because they're not ready to be at that place in the aging process. We believe in, in aging in place and, and providing dignity and peace of mind and security and safety. One of my primary concerns is the development of trust. Mm -hmm. You know, the, the compatibility and the trust are two huge issues. Those are both things that we take very seriously. We go through a real rigorous uh, process to vet our caregivers. Um, you know, we, we put them through strong background checks and you know, everything that goes with it, reference checks and all that, to make sure they're of reputable standards and things like that to be in our organization. So that's where the process starts. We come in and we do a, a complete assessment on the individual to understand what the needs are. And then we also do a full safety assessment of the home as well. So this is the master bedroom and taking a quick look around, it looks like you've secured this room pretty well. I, Sounds you know, good. Yeah, no throw rugs down. It looks like you know she can maneuver quite well in the room in here, so that's good. Uh, you have a master bathroom in here as well? Yes, right here. Oh, okay, great. Let me just show you in. Great, it looks like you've already kind of started some processes in the bathroom here with a nice shower seat in there for her to get in the shower. I would probably recommend removing the rug. Um, just that's a, a hazard if she's in the bathroom coming out of the shower, she could potentially slip on that. Good idea. Yeah. So by having a comfort keeper in the home, you know, a few days a week can really help alleviate that task mode when, when Maureen's here and she can spend time with, with her mother. She could even take her mom out to get her nails done or shopping as well. This is Nicole Baker, a former caregiver herself, who is spending some time with John and Marianne to give them a feel for what it would be like to have someone around. So how many days a week can you come? It's totally up to you, Marianne. If you want someone there one day a week for a few hours, we can do that. If you want someone there every day, we can do that as well. It would be nice to get away from him once a while, and I'm sure he would uh, love to get away from me. I think that it's important that John can go out and live his life but not feel guilty that he's abandoning her or leaving her by herself. The goal is to get you back to your normal routine with just a little bit of help with a friend. He used to go play golf on uh, Saturdays and Wednesdays and I'd be free as a bird. I can't wait for that day. Um, our goal is to match her with a caregiver that makes her feel so comfortable that she totally forgets that he's even gone and when he comes home she'll have a great story to tell him. I know also that you have gadgets and things like that, products that you try to incorporate to help them reduce their isolation, allow them to communicate maybe more with their families. Absolutely, this here is called the Grand Pad. It's kind of like a play on words. It's iPad, but grand as in grandparent, so it's Grand Pad. <laughs> it is a tablet that was designed specifically with seniors in mind. The icons are very large. Um, 
the seniors are able to view the screen and click on the screen and interact with the grand pad. Um, the grand pad is a great tool to eliminate social isolation in seniors.